Hey everyone, Astro Kit here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. And happy Valentine's Day to you guys. Today we have a special video. We're talking about your eighth house and your future spouse, but more so the dynamic you'll have with this person based on your eighth house zodiac sign. Now, why exactly are we talking about the eighth house? As a lot of you guys do know, the seventh house is the default house to look at when it comes to predicting your future spouse. And I do have a seventh house and future spouse video on my channel, which is kind of an introductory video to this one. However, something that I've noticed, something that I've observed is that the eighth house is almost as important to look at when it comes to predicting your future spouse as the seventh house. And it's because the eighth house represents intimate bonds, your deeper connection connections with other people and your shared resources that you have with your future spouse. By looking at the zodiac sign of your eighth house, we can get a picture of what your life would be like after marriage, what your bond would be like with your spouse after you get into a long-term committed relationship with them. So although the seventh house is very relevant and it probably helps to look at that house first before you take a look at the eighth house, the seventh house can be kind of seen as the agreement stage with your spouse, meeting that person, agreeing to be their girlfriend, agreeing to be their boyfriend, agreeing to get married to them, for example. But what exactly goes on underneath the surface? What is the deeper connection there? What is your connection like over time? Looking at your eighth house, we get a good idea of what your relationship is like after the commitment stage. And not only that, but something else we can learn in this video is that the 8th house is the 2nd to the 7th house. Therefore, it can represent the gains that you get through your marriage. As some of you guys know, the 2nd aspect to any house can show the gains of that house. And specifically with the 8th house, it can show your shared resources with your spouse. So we're going to take a look at the gains that you get through marriage in a material sense, also in an emotional sense. And I'll set the disclaimers now that if you have multiple planets in your 8th house, that adds dimension to the this whole concept and although we're just talking about the zodiac sign of your seventh house the planets that you have there and the themes that those planets represent can be seen in your future marriage or life after marriage too and another disclaimer is that throughout this video i'm saying spouse and marriage however this concept can apply to long-term committed relationships too I'll emphasize that I don't feel like this concept can apply to superficial relationships or new relationships, but relationships that have been going on for a while. Long-term commitments, if you live with your spouse or live with your partner, this can apply to that kind of dynamic too. And if you don't know your eighth house sign yet, I'll put the calculator down below. Most of you guys probably already know it by heart. And I'll put on the screen right now a picture of your eighth house in the table chart as well as in the circle chart. It usually just says the number eight and then the zodiac sign that is over the eighth house. And so I'll see you in your timestamp. So with your 8th house in Aries, what is the deeper connection like with your future spouse? With your spouse or the person that you come into union with, you can have a bond that is very passionate. Some words to describe your bond with your person can be passionate, it can be desirous, it can be very sexual as well. The energy between you guys, once you get into a committed relationship, can be very possessive. You guys can be very possessive over each other. There can be some themes of jealousy as well. This Martian energy can give this very aggressive or assertive energy when it comes to how you feel towards your spouse or how they feel towards you. Conflict can be a major theme in your partnership. I can't lie to you guys since Mars is in the mix here. However, through this relationship, you might learn how to deal with conflict resolution, how to create balance to your partnership and not just have conflict, but also learn how to solve conflicts with your person. And going back to that word we talked about earlier of desire, I feel like that's so strong in your future partnership. And specifically, your spouse can be someone who desires you quite a lot. They can have sort of tunnel vision for you and pursue you quite heavily before you become committed to them. And this could happen the other way around where you do pursue them quite heavily or they are the object of your desire. And through this desirous energy, this aggressive or assertive energy of Aries, you can find that you get into a partnership quite quickly. You get into a partnership impulsively and perhaps you might commit to a person or they commit to you in a quick manner or impulsive manner. So what exactly do you gain from marriage? What do you gain through this partnership, through this union with your person? Something that you might gain is independence. Before marriage, perhaps maybe you didn't feel independent emotionally, financially, or physically, but after you get married or get into your union, so to speak, you can find that independence is a strong theme. Maybe you start pursuing independent activities. Almost ironically enough, you can learn how to stand on your own. Perhaps the lessons you learn throughout your partnership or throughout your marriage can lead you to a realization of how independent you are, how independent you need to be. 
Something else that you might find prominent in what you learn or gain through marriage is that you learn how to stand up for yourself, you learn how to set boundaries with other people, and especially with your spouse. So overall, with your eighth house in Aries, when it comes to your intimate bond with your future spouse, it can be very passionate, very impulsive for some people, and through marriage, you gain the sense of independence and boundaries. So with your eighth house in Taurus, what is the bond like with your future spouse on a more intimate level? After you get married or come into union with your person, you can find that your relationship relationship is very sensuous. And how this can manifest for a lot of people is that there is this huge theme of materialism in your future marriage or partnership. With your person, you can find that you guys do very indulgent things together. Perhaps you do luxurious things, you spend a lot of money with your person. For a lot of you guys, you can marry someone wealthy or who has a lot of money. And so granted that there is this theme of material abundance. They could spend a lot of money on you or buying you gifts. And just generally speaking, you might do a lot of luxurious things together. You might go shopping, you might go to the spa, anything where you're spending money or indulging, that can be a huge theme in your future marriage or partnership. And going back to this theme of bonding with each other, what your bond is like on a deeper level, it can be one that is very stable one that is secure, the kind of marriage or partnership that is stable or comfortable. So speaking of stable and secure, what is it that you gain through marriage? After marriage, after you become in union with your spouse, something that you gain specifically is financial security, financial stability, and this theme of material comfort. A lot of you guys can experience becoming wealthy after marriage. And that could be because of your spouse. Maybe they have money, maybe they have assets that they share with you. But on the other side of that, there can be a circumstance where you become wealthy because of the business you create with your spouse. Maybe you guys start a business together. Perhaps you start your own business after marriage and it could thrive or become profitable for you. And whatever scenario happens for you guys after marriage, there is a lot of different ones that can manifest. But the common theme between them can be stability, can be security, whether it be emotional, financial, or material. So overall, with your 8th house in Taurus, you can experience a marriage or deep long-term bond with someone that is stable, that is reliable, that offers you some sort of security. So what will your dynamic be like with your future spouse if your 8th house is in Gemini? With your spouse or the person that you come into union with, there can be this sense of fun and playfulness. And with your dynamic on a deeper level, this is the kind of relationship where you might feel like your spouse is your best friend. Friend. And when I think about Gemini, I think about the lover's card in tarot. And if you guys are into tarot and you've seen the lover's card, you know it is a pair of twins. And I can't say that this is a twin flame partnership or kind of get that message across to you guys. I just feel like there is that theme of mirroring with your partnership. And after you commit to your person long term, you can find that you guys mirror each other a lot. You guys act very similar, do very similar things. And for some people, I can imagine the dynamic where you start to look like your spouse after a while. And after after your marriage, after you become in union with your spouse, you can find that you guys do a lot of activities together, you learn new things together, you guys can travel a lot together. And generally speaking, there can be this theme of learning with your spouse where you guys learn new things together. Maybe you learn a language together, you learn a skill together, you have a similar hobby together. And through those skills and hobbies that you do together, they can bring you a lot closer and kind of contribute to the intimacy you have in your partnership. So something that becomes prominent, something that you learn through marriage, something that you gain through marriage can be this theme of communication. Through this partnership, you're able to learn how to communicate better. Perhaps you learn how to communicate better with your spouse, with people in general. You might learn how to become more expressive, learning how to express your thoughts, express your feelings, express your ideas. And your spouse can be the kind of person that encourages that out of you. And in a more literal sense, some of you guys can learn how to speak another language, for example, learn how to sing, learn how to do poetry, anything along those lines that relate to verbal self-expression. So overall, with your eighth house in Gemini, after you get married, the deeper bond you might have with your spouse is one that can feel like a friendship, one where it's like your spouse is your best friend, they feel like your platonic life partner. And something that you gain through this union, something that you gain after marriage, is this sense of communication, learning how to communicate better, learning new skills or hobbies. So eighth house in Cancer, when it comes to your future spouse and the dynamic you have with them, you might have a relationship where you guys nurture each other and when it comes to your deeper bond with them your more intimate bond with them you can find that this person takes care of you this person is nurturing to you or you can be nurturing to this person and over time with this person you can find that they are very comforting to you they can bring you a lot of emotional comfort 
psychological comfort. Since this theme of nurturing can be strong, you can find that they want to nurture your mind, nurture your mental health, or nurture your psychological needs. And therefore, as you can imagine, this can create a very strong emotional bond with your person. And the emotional bond can be so strong to the point where it's hard to let go of. And for some people, this could even manifest as themes of enmeshment or codependency. And so with this person, on a more positive note, when it's functioning in a healthy way, you can find that this person is a home to you. They bring you a lot of comfort, they bring you security, either psychologically, emotionally, or physically. So speaking of this theme of home, what is something that you gain through marriage? What do you gain after you become in union with your spouse? Something that you gain through marriage is a sense of family. Now this can be a literal family, and for a lot of you guys, you might find that you become pregnant after marriage, maybe in a quick turnaround time. And depending on who's watching this, you can find that motherhood is a strong theme in your life after marriage. But either way, after you come into union with your person, you find this theme of family, home, or parenthood being strong in your life. So with your eighth house in Leo, what is the deeper, more intimate bond with your future spouse gonna be like? With this placement, you might find that after you get married, after you become in union with your person, the dynamic between you guys is very playful. It's very fun, it's lighthearted or childish. This is the kind of union or marriage or partnership where you guys do a lot of fun things together. It could be something that you even prioritize in your partnership where you guys have fun together, you do games together, you might even have a hobby with your spouse. With this partnership, there is this strong theme of pleasure, so you guys want to do pleasurable things together, things that you enjoy. And also through your partnership, this theme of identity becomes pronounced. You can find this sense of identity within yourself, or kind of metaphorically speaking, find yourself after you get married to your person. And a circumstance that I've seen manifest with Leo 8th house people is that your relationship can become your identity. With whoever you become married to or become in union with, it's like this theme of you guys being a unit, you guys being one thing, maybe you take on their last name and that brings the sense of identity to you and your relationship can be a big part of your identity after you get with your person. So what exactly is it that you gain through this partnership? What do you gain after marriage? So something that you can gain after marriage is status. You can gain fame or prestige. And again, that's something I've kind of observed with Leo 8th house people is that you could get married to someone who has status, someone who has fame, and through marrying them, you gain status or fame as well. And for whatever reason, your marriage with your person, your union, can bring you status in society. It can make you more recognizable, more prominent. And generally speaking, if not fame, it can bring you importance in society. And manifesting in a literal sense or specific sense, you can marry someone with a powerful last name, someone with a title, and you can gain some sort of of title through your marriage and other than that we kind of already touched on it but something that you gain is this sense of identity this sense of importance or this sense of self but ultimately to sum up your leo eighth house something that you might experience after you get married when it comes to the deeper bond with your spouse is this sense of playfulness experiencing more pleasure in life indulging in life and something that you gain through marriage is this sense of status importance or identity so with your eighth house in Virgo, what will the dynamic be like with your future spouse on a more deeper or intimate level? You have the kind of union that is logical, that makes sense, that actually serves a purpose in your life. And speaking of service and purpose, those can be key themes in your union with your spouse, where you guys are of service to each other. Maybe your spouse is very helpful towards you, and what can manifest for a lot of you guys is being in a relationship where this person can feel like your coworker. They can feel like someone that wants to help you. Perhaps they can help you with your job. They can help you with your work. Somebody that is very helpful towards you. And this can go both ways. So you can be someone who wants to serve or help your spouse and in return, your spouse serves or helps you. And on a deeper level, you guys can help serve each other's life purpose consciously or unconsciously. Another key theme with your union is healing or health, where your person can facilitate some sort of change in your life that has to do with healing, health on a mental level, physical level, or even with your diet too. And speaking to the point of mental health, you can have a spouse that cares a lot about your psychological well-being. And for some reason or another, you guys can do activities together that relate to mental health. Perhaps you guys work together to create something that improves your mental health. You guys can even have some of the same habits or the same hobbies or daily routine. And also the theme of improvement comes up, where self-improvement can be a strong theme, 
perhaps through your union you guys help to improve each other so what exactly do you gain out of marriage what do you gain after you become in union with your spouse so something specific you can gain through marriage or after marriage is professional success going back to that theme of service like we talked about earlier your spouse can fill a role in your life that helps you in some way and specifically for a lot of people this role that they fill can be professional where they help you in your professional life perhaps you start a business together or perhaps they help you in some sort of professional capacity or achieve a professional goal that you have and something else you might gain through marriage or after marriage is this sense of health or well-being you can become healthier after marriage mentally physically or in terms of diet too so ultimately if we could sum it up with your eighth house in virgo you can have a union that is based on improvement based on self-improvement based on health healing or wellness what you can gain through marriage is professional success or a healthier lifestyle so when it comes to the deeper bond between you and your spouse you can find that it is based on romance you might have the kind of relationship where you guys like to do romantic things for each other especially your spouse can be a romantic person they can be kind of like that libra archetype where they are personable they are charming they like doing things for you that are physically appealing maybe getting you gifts they can like doing romantic gestures for you. Another thing that could be common in your relationship is doing many sensuous things together. And as you know, Venus likes to indulge in the material world. So with you and your person, you guys can do a lot of things together that are very indulgent. For example, going to plays, going to museums, doing artistic things, or buying things together. And some of you guys can even bond together based on your art or artistic hobbies that you both share together. And something that's possible is that your spouse can be wealthy, your spouse can give you a lot of material items. And even if your spouse isn't necessarily wealthy, you might find that they just like giving you things, and while we're on the topic of wealth and finances, you might find that you become more wealthy after you meet your spouse, you make more money, or have the means to be more materially indulgent. And another hallmark with your relationship dynamics is balance and harmony. So you can have a spouse that wants to create harmony and balance with you, bring harmony and balance into your life. And for whatever reason, that just can be a theme in your partnership where you guys are always working on conflict resolution, working on harmony, working on creating balance. So the theme of boundaries can be important where you learn to create better boundaries, maybe your spouse helps you to create better boundaries, or you realize what your boundaries are once you get into your union. So speaking of harmony, balance, and that theme so present in the Libra archetype, you can find that your partnership can feel somewhat like a business partnership at times. And for some people, you can have a spouse that wants to invest in your business. You can go into business with your spouse, for example. But if it's not so literal, you might just find that you guys do a lot of negotiating, you guys do a lot of bargaining, um, it can feel like that business partnership type of relationship, even if it's not literally a business partnership. So what is something you gain after you get married? What do you gain through this partnership or union with your person? Through marriage, something that you gain is balance. After you get married, perhaps your spouse is a very balanced person, or for some reason they bring balance to your life. And something else you can directly gain that's more tangible, and we kind of touched on this earlier, is material security, material wealth, and a lot of you guys can literally marry someone who has material wealth themselves. After marriage, you might also gain a keener sense of art or aesthetics. You guys can have some sort of hobby that you take up after marriage, or maybe your spouse teaches you about art or aesthetics, or you become more aesthetically inclined, and you can develop finer taste after you get married, especially if you become wealthy after marriage or marry somebody that is wealthy. So overall, to sum it up, with your Libra 8th house, through your union, through your marriage with your person you can experience the theme of balance harmony also have an intimate bond that is rooted in romance and something you gain out of marriage is a sense of balance in your own life as well as a strong sense of art or aesthetics so with your eighth house in scorpio you can have a union with your spouse that is intense or transformative you can experience this circumstance in your life that after you get married or come into union with your person your life changes drastically drastic in the sense that before marriage you can have a certain lifestyle a certain way of living and then after marriage it completely changes given the extremeness that scorpio is known for it can be one extreme to the other so for example maybe you guys get married and become very wealthy after marriage and maybe you weren't wealthy before that and that's more of a specific example that not everyone will experience but some of you guys can experience the opposite as well this can also be the kind of union where on a deeper level it feels spiritual it can even feel karmic or death so not only does your life transform literally, but you can transform spiritually as well. Given the nature of Mars, given the nature of Pluto, which are the rulers of Scorpio, you guys can find that possessiveness is strong in your partnership, the sense of impulse, 
passion, desire. You can have a spouse that feels very possessive over you, maybe even controlling over you, and you can feel that way towards your spouse as well. For some, this can result in extreme emotions as well. Feeling things extremely, having extreme emotions towards your spouse, or they feel extremely towards you. And one of the emotions that does come with Scorpio is jealousy, which might not manifest for every single person watching this, but as you can imagine with the archetype of Scorpio being so extreme or intense, that emotional intensity can be strong in your union with your person. Let's talk a little bit about what you gain through marriage. What is something you gain after you come into union with your spouse? Something you gain through this partnership is transformation. And we touched on it earlier with spiritual transformation, physical transformation, even just a lifestyle transformation can be strong and something you gain after marriage. And to get more specific, some of you guys can experience learning how to be more vulnerable. This can be a relationship that teaches you vulnerability, teaches you how to see your shadow. Therefore, you can experience this psychological transformation too. So overall, to sum it up with your eighth house in Scorpio, you can have a union that is very intense. It can be karmic, it can be spiritual. Something you gain through marriage is spiritual transformation. So with your eighth house in Sagittarius, when it comes to life after marriage, life after you have a long-term commitment with your future spouse, you can experience a dynamic that is fun adventurous and spontaneous and specifically a key theme that is present in your union with your spouse is this theme of learning you can have this dynamic where you learn a lot from your spouse your spouse learns a lot from you your spouse can feel like an advisor to you or somebody that teaches you a lot of things and as a couple you guys can learn a lot of new things together you guys can travel a lot for example or just gain a lot of new experiences after marriage you can find that your world opens up and you gain a new broader perspective on life and so when it comes to this deeper, more intimate bond with your spouse, you can find that you guys have similar belief systems. You guys can have similar philosophies on life, similar life perspectives. And through these philosophies, through these perspectives, even religion for some people or belief systems, you have this deeper connection with your spouse. And in some circumstances, you could have different religions, different belief systems. However, there is some key seed that bonds you guys together when it comes to your philosophy or the way you look at life. And when it comes to this close personal bond with your spouse, it can be one that is devotional. One where you devote yourself to your spouse. Your spouse devotes themselves to you. It can kind of be this relationship where your spouse might worship you, you might worship your spouse. That's kind of the extreme of Sagittarius energy is worship. But generally speaking, the theme of devotion can be strong in your intimate bond. And so what is it that you gain through marriage? What do you gain through this union or partnership? Something that you gain through marriage is wisdom, knowledge, and culture. It's quite likely that you can marry someone from a different culture than you, a different religion than you, a different ethnicity, and through this marriage, you learn about their culture. You learn about their religion or their belief system. And overall, through this partnership, you can gain more experiences, you can gain more life experience, you can travel more, go to different countries, ultimately gaining more diverse experiences in your life. So with your eighth house in Capricorn, after marriage, when it comes to your dynamic with your future spouse, it can be one that is stable, practical, and reliable. With your future spouse, there can be this theme of duty, doing what you have to do, taking on responsibility. And through marriage, you might learn about these Capricorn themes of commitment, perseverance, and discipline. For some people, a circumstance that might manifest is this theme of burden, where you have to work hard hard on your partnership. You have to put a lot of effort into it in order to make it the kind of relationship that you desire. And it's definitely the kind of marriage or partnership that gets better over time. So what is the deeper bond between you guys? What is the intimate glue that holds you together? You can find that what holds you together on a deeper level is your life goals. With your future spouse, they can be someone who has the same life goals as you or shares a similar vision when it comes to their long-term goals for their life. So by being together, being a couple, you can experience helping each other achieve your goals. And that's where that practicality comes in that we were talking about earlier, where the Saturnian energy, the Capricorn energy brings this theme of burden or seriousness or responsibility. However, it's that sense of discipline, that sense of burden or responsibility that helps you achieve what you want in life. Therefore, your spouse can be someone who wants to help you achieve what you want. You can be someone that helps your spouse achieve what they want. And that can be the deeper undercurrent in your marriage or relationship, where although it can feel like a commitment or something that is burdensome at times or serious or practical, at the same time, it is progressive and helping you get somewhere further in life. So that brings us into what do you gain through marriage? What do you gain after you come into union with your spouse? Something that you gain through marriage is status. Now you can marry someone that already has status and so by marrying them you gain status as well. Or it can manifest in a way where the union itself brings you status or brings you into an authority position or brings you into prominence in society. And something else that you can gain after marriage, not just status, is professional success. It can be likely that your spouse is in the same industry 
industry as you or somebody that wants to help you in your own industry. And also through marriage, you can gain a sense of discipline. You can gain a sense of humility. It's the kind of union where you gain a lot of wisdom and maturity. So with your eighth house in Aquarius, when it comes to you, your future spouse, and your dynamic together, something that you can experience is this theme of innovation, this theme of drastic change. And specifically, a lot of you guys might experience the kind of relationship that breaks the status quo. And it's quite likely you could marry someone from a different culture, ethnicity, or race than you, which is not unusual in today's society, as you guys know. However, you specifically can have something about your partnership that breaks societal norms. Something about it could be taboo, something that isn't normal, something that people reject or don't understand at first. And I've seen in examples with Aquarius 8th house people, this theme of shock factor being so present in your marriage or partnership. So as it pertains to the deeper bond that you have with your spouse, something that could bond you guys together is your own weirdness or quirkiness, which is such a cliche word when it comes to Aquarius, but that can truly happen with you guys where you have the same kind of weird quirks or same kind of weirdness that you bond together about. And also on a deeper level, something could happen where it's like you guys have a greater purpose to transform society. And through this marriage, through this union, you're able to break societal norms. You're able to transform something in society that was archaic or antiquated. And for a lot of you guys, the union itself that you have with your spouse breaks social norms, breaks societal boundaries, or changes society in some way. And you have this potential to set a new precedent of what marriage should look like. So what is it that you gain through marriage? What do you gain after you come into union with your spouse? Something that you can gain through marriage is this sense of individuality. Your spouse could be someone that helps you embrace your true self or embrace your authenticity. Something else that you gain through marriage, and we kind of touched on it earlier, is this theme of wanting to change things, change the world, or be a revolutionary. So for a lot of you guys, through marriage, you can become more of a humanitarian, you can become altruistic, or even philanthropic. But overall, through marriage, you gain this sense of independence, individuality, and the ability to change society. So with your 8th house in Pisces, something that is really present in your future spouse dynamic is this theme of spirituality. After you get married, after you come into union with your spouse, you can find that you become more spiritual. And for some people, you become more religious. And through this marriage or union, you're able to really work on your spiritual journey and make a lot of spiritual evolution or spiritual transformation in your life. Speaking of spirituality, you can have a relationship or union that is karmic. It can be the kind of relationship that is a past life relationship, something to the effect where you feel like you met your spouse before or you have some sort of karmic cycle with them. And to get deeper with this topic of past lives, as we have our own spiritual journeys or spiritual evolution, those journeys or evolutions can take place over lifetimes. And in that past lifetime, you could have agreed to meet in this lifetime and do something profound spiritually together. You might even have this sort of soul contract where you agree to help each other in this life, you agree to help each other on your spiritual journey. This is something that can go on on the subconscious level of your partnership. It's not something that's so explicit, like you agree to meet each other in the next life, but it's something that is so unspoken, hence why you can feel like you met this person before or you have a karmic relationship with them. And also through marriage, something that might happen for you is that you become more charitable. You become more of a humanitarian. You and your spouse, for example, can do charity work together. You can start a charity together or work on some sort of humanitarian cause together. And ultimately, when it comes to the deeper bond of your partnership and the more intimate bond, it is a very spiritual one with a deeper spiritual purpose. Something that can manifest for you is this theme of sacrifice. The theme of loss can be present too, given the archetype of Pisces. So some of you guys can sacrifice a lot for your partner or your partner sacrifices a lot for you. And through this union, even though there is a deeper spiritual connection or subconscious connection, in the more like 3D realm, there can be more sacrifices you have to make for your partnership. So what exactly do you gain out of this partnership? Through your marriage or union with this person, you gain spiritual evolution. When it's all said and done, Pisces is the zodiac sign that represents unconditional love. So that is something you might gain through your partnership, something you can experience with your partner is unconditional love. So that being said, thank you guys for watching this video. Check out the Future Spouse playlist down below and happy Valentine's Day to you guys.